Hey everyone, welcome back. Now we're going to turn to talk about another aspect of social and emotional development in adolescence. This is all about an adolescent's sense of self. Now there are three parts of the sense of self, and your book doesn't really describe it this way, but I find it useful and an easy way to remember it. Okay, I call them the ABCs. The A refers to affect. This is how a person feels about themselves. It's their sense of self-esteem and their emotions from moment to moment. The second part, the B of the ABCs, is behavior. This is how a person acts in any one given situation. The last part, the C, is cognition. This is how a person thinks of themselves, what their beliefs are, what their values are, what their personality traits are. Now, when we put the ABCs of a sense of self together, this is a primary goal of adolescence. They have to figure out all of these pieces. And here's the important part. They have to learn to act in ways that are consistent with it. So, for example, for the cognitive piece, let's say an adolescent thinks of themselves as independent and assertive. But in terms of their behavior, maybe sometimes they act too bossy. My own adolescent, Rowan, suffers from this on occasion. Well, if they act too bossy in terms of their behavior, that deviates from the idea that they're assertive and independent, so it doesn't jibe with their cognition. This may lead to them feeling a certain way, negative in certain social situations if their friends reject them. It can lead to lower self-esteem over time. So a core issue in adolescence is that each adolescent needs to figure out who they are, cognition. They need to act in ways that are consistent with it, behavior, and they need to learn to feel good about themselves. That's the effective piece. How does that pertain to us? Well, a lot of times people act in ways we don't really like, and they may have traits that we don't appreciate. But the core purpose of an adolescent is to figure this out, and we have to support them on that struggle. So even though sometimes they may not be showing traits we like or behaviors that we like, we have to encourage them to explore and try out different things. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't have boundaries and expectations. It doesn't mean we don't have to discipline them or, you know, suggest some changes at times. We definitely have to do that. But the key is we have to accept each adolescent and value them for who they are, regardless of the traits they show, regardless of the ways they act. Think of it this way. If you catch a four-year-old painting on the walls, you don't like the behavior, right? But do you reject the whole person? No. This concept is called unconditional positive regard. And we can show this to adolescents by saying, look, I value you for who you are. Sometimes you show this trait. I don't love it, but I still love you, no matter what traits you show or what behaviors you engage in. By contrast, a lot of adults show what's called conditions of worth. A condition of worth is creating a sense that a person is only going to be loved or valued if the person has certain traits or if they act in certain ways. This is the worst thing we can do to somebody. You can imagine, since we learned about people with gender identity variances, if somebody has a variance in gender identity and talks about it with their parents, the parents may say, I'm only going to love you if you stay a girl or a boy. That suggests to the person that they can't be their true gender identity. This creates a condition of worth. The key here is that no adolescent can be the person who they truly are supposed to be if a condition of worth exists. So a key point from this chapter is that we have to accept the adolescents in our lives, support them, create expectations and boundaries and help them to conform to them, but let them know that they're going to be supported and nurtured no matter who they are. Okay, I look forward to talking with you soon. Bye-bye!